what are the demands of Bowser owners? Bowser owners had demanded a 115% increase on their hires as fuel prices have gone up. They began a strike on Saturday calling for their demands to be met. A solution was reached during a meeting with Minister of Power and Energy, Kanchan Vijay Sekara today. What was the solution? They agreed to reimburse the losses that we would face in the next two months. It will take at least a week to cover the losses we have directly sustained. We decided to resume services tomorrow. Our fares have been increased by about 62 rupees. We agreed to increase fares by 85%. They asked to increase fares by 115%. We propose to increase it by 95%. What was the situation regarding fuel supply? Many filling stations were closed today. Long queues were seen at stations that were kept open. Tensions flared after a filling station in Molligoda in Kalutara ran out of fuel. Filling stations in Polonnaruwa and Kanduruwela had run out of diesel. Our correspondent reported that the situation has been the same for five days. Will the fuel crisis worsen the situation in the country? Long queues for petrol were seen even before Bowser owners had gone on strike. The shortage of dollars affected fuel imports to the country, creating a massive shortage of fuel. Sri Lanka is now taking steps to restructure its debt as it grapples with an economic crisis. International rating agencies have downgraded Sri Lanka's ratings in terms of the country's capability to repay its debt. Amidst this situation, the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation says it is unable to secure long-term tenders to import fuel. As a result, the government is now paying for fuel when consignments reach the country. However, serious questions are stemming from these transactions. We have about 6,000 metric tons of petrol at present. The last tanker arrived on April 19th. It's been 12 days. We have about 5,000 metric tons of diesel. They began unloading a fuel consignment about three days ago. It is still being unloaded after 32 days at sea. Fuel was imported from the Vital company at a total cost of 558,000 US dollars. There is no fuel in the country. We are to receive a consignment of octane 92 petrol and diesel under the Indian credit line but they are not bringing these consignments down. They are trying to cover up this crisis. These are temporary solutions. This government has paid more than 42 million US dollars only in demerit charges. The CPC has made an overpayment of about 22 million US dollars for four fuel shipments. If we consider the recent shipment, we had to pay 52 million US dollars. This was the amount mentioned in the invoice we received on the 22nd of March. But the actual bill only quoted a price of 39 million US dollars. However, the CPC had paid all 52 million US dollars by the 7th of April. The overpayment in this instant alone is about 13 billion US dollars. The central bank governor has opened a special fund inviting donations to import medicines. It's not suitable to mishandle the situation in a country like this. I have called for a full report on how demerit charges were paid. I haven't received the report yet. Many banks couldn't issue letters of credit as our ratings have been downgraded. Therefore, we had to go for other options to make the purchase. As we are making the payments using cash in hand, I admit that we had to spend more out of the funds that were allocated for future spendings. We had received a proposal for crude oil supply from Russia. 
its agent with a UAE company. They had provided their initial quotation based on the Singapore Brent pricing method, but they have now asked to change this pricing system. Apart from agreeing to this change, the authorities had agreed to pay according to the Platts crude oil pricing system. The surprising thing here is that even without checking the charter party agreement, the CPC had agreed to pay 125,000 US dollars as demerit charges. This is more than the 20,000 US dollars mentioned in the agreement. I don't know on what basis they agreed to that. There is suspicion as to who is benefiting of these excess funds. This creates suspicion that the money is ending up in the pockets of a few corrupt officials in the country. <laughs> In terms of crude oil imports, I can look into the final supplier that we have chosen and then inform you. Usually we purchase fuel from companies in the Middle Eastern region. But if we can purchase crude oil that suits our refinery at a lower cost and then extend the time period for repayment, then we hope to go for that option. But we won't receive crude oil under the Indian credit line. They only provide us diesel, petrol and jet fuel. Diesel, petrol, jet fuel. Under the Indian credit line, we were to receive a fuel shipment on March 24th. Was an emergency purchase required until that ship reached the country? Why did they pay 18,000 US dollars as demurrages for two fuel shipments that were brought to the country as emergency purchases when there were two consignments worth 500 million US dollars that were scheduled to reach Sri Lanka? <laughs> Under the Indian credit line, initially they had agreed to provide us fuel worth 500 million US dollars. 400 million US dollars has already been used up as we imported fuel in March and April. We have 100 million US dollars remaining to import fuel for May. We have placed orders for two ships. India has also increased the credit line by 200 million US dollars. We called for a tender to import fuel on the 22nd, but no supply came forward. When we extended the deadline until the 29th, some supplies had come forward. Yesterday, we finalized it. We will receive four fuel shipments this month.